Right then, let's get on with this one, shall we? This is a power supply I got from... What's the name of the website? Not AliExpress, it was something... I might post later if I remember. Uh, this is Gopher CPS 3205 power supply. 0 to 32 volt, 0 to 5 amp. Single, single power supply, single power supply. As a uh, twisty knob. You can have it in uh, volt or amp limits. So current limit or voltage limit. On and off and lock front control panel display if you like. So let's show you this powered on. There we go. Yeah it's a bit flickery. I'm on 60 frames. That's clearly not 60 frames. But if I get this in view so I can show you. So you put it on constant voltage. This obviously goes all the way down from zero all the way up to 32.3 volts so you get an extra 0.3 of a volt in this one and you can go to current limit and you can set your current limit just by the press of a button to switch digits and you go up in milliamps all the way to an amp two three four five this one actually goes up to 5.1 amp. So yeah, so you've got constant voltage, which just selects that side for you. Well, constant current, and you select that side for you. And so the easy controls are relatively easy for a, like a little basic bench power supply. You know, it's always worth it. Uh, lock control panel buttons and simply switch the load on or off. How you do desire. We've got across the back the unplug. Three pin UK IEC mains adapter plug. This is horrible without the lights on. So two binding posts there. They come with the screws but I took them off. Um, IEC power connector. On and off power and that's your voltage selector. Two 120 to 240 volts. I taped it over because I never used the other selection for voltage. Let me turn these lights off. Let me find my screwdriver. Let's take this baby apart there. All you have at the back is four screws, Phillips screws. So, so quite easy accessible as well if you want to mod, repair, or uh, you know, rehouse into another module or case. I say, I mean, I quite like this power supply, and I really can't remember the website I got it from. Now this has been on not too long ago. So I'd best be careful of juicy fat cups and the likes. This bottom part slides out. Like so. And it's actually built upside down. That's the top of the case. And that is the bottom. So you might want the lights back on for this one. If it will help you guys, I don't know. Actually you put the main top part on as well. Just for the pure sake of it, we'll find the plug on. I've got too many plugs and too many things. Too many things. Ah, we go. That's a bit more of a depth of field perspe perspective. Right. I think you said there's not actually a lot built in these things. Not a lot at all. I mean, that back panels. Loosey goosey at the back. Um, I think I changed the output capacitance on this one for what reason I cannot remember. Um, nice little Nikron 
wire um, shunt resistor. And um, let me see if I can remember how to actually. Do you know what? I'm not going to take it fully apart. It is a bit of a nightmare, I must say. But as you can see, one, two, three, four transformers, four bulk capacitors there. Um, what else do we have? Nice silicon wires. I like that. That's a nice little touch for the output and the voltage selector at the back here. Uh, input fuse, which is you know, general in this sort of stuff. Um, what else do we have? That's the uh, A, not that you can see. How should I do this? I'll tell you what. What did I do with that light? So just put a bit of light perspective on this for you. So yeah, there you go. Little chip down there is probably a controller chip. Little four, five, six, seven pin. Then you've got that main chip there, which is the, obviously the controller for controller for the LCD at the front. Um, but in terms of component count, it's not actually a lot really, in here. You know, it is generally a standard switch mode power supply you know so you've got your bridge rectifier there two MOSFET or transistors there input protection uh, input uh, filtering a little bit of uh, protection down here X class cap little MOV um, more filtering um, there's not really much to it. It's two um, transistors on this side as well, bolted to the side of the case. But that is all you get. But I must say, I've got two of these devices, hence PS2 written on the front of it. I also have a PS1. And uh, I use them quite a lot. The other one I'm using is driving my monitor at the moment because uh, I lost a 19 volt monitor. Um, power brick so just had to wire one of these for the power supply for that and that runs at 19 volts and about 1.1 amp and it's on pretty much all day long gets relatively warm it's quite warm to touch not so much hot but warm um, and I say the case is actually quite cool it's actually basically built like a heatsink so you've got like kind of Fins, but um, heat dissipation wise, I think is uh, not bad when the caps are you know shot. I think this is about 40 quid to buy one of these, so you're not going to be expecting uh, highly expensive components inside them. What are these make? CDC, mm, no idea, couldn't tell you, unfortunately. I think the one I put on the back there is a Samsung S A M X O N, just for the sake of it. Um, but yeah, built built quite well, built down to a cost, obviously. But function-wise and uh, reliability-wise, so far so good. I think I've had them for roughly about maybe a year and a half each. So, uh, you know. What can I say? Get what you pay for, but this is built quite well. Everything's shielded. Um, I like it. Especially like the case design as well. You can just rip off the bottom of the case if you really wanted to. You know, using a fat panel. So let's put this back together. Again. If I can remember which holes it was going into. Okay. Yeah. Top two holes. Guides, I mean, not holes. Yeah, so that. I'm going to usually. Got to pull this out of the way so this gets caught. Which has already got caught. There we go. And then. Of course, this ain't going too well for demonstration purposes, is it? Electronics, got to have a bit of patience. 
Okay, I'm not sure what happened there, but anyway, back to putting the screws on. I think this camera has a tendency to overheat, which I read somewhere. And I think it just turned itself off, although it didn't give me a warning. Oh well, not to worry, see how long this lasts for. And I'll see if I get any errors or warning messages pop up before it turns off because most of these electronic devices they give you the error and then they switch off before you have the time to read the error which is not great because you know how the hell are you supposed to know what's up with the damn thing yes by the way I'm broken turn off you know, it gives you no time at all to see what electrical problem was and the other screw is hiding from me but yeah as I say I do recommend these and what the name was that bloody website? Not AliExpress, but similar. I used to use it a lot. Anyway, you guys let me know. If you search for Gopher uh, CPS 3205 power supply, I'm sure you get a link to it somewhere on, from Google search site. But other than that, I'll have a look myself because it will just only annoy me if I can't find it. Slight review, but I say these are worth getting for like 30 40 quid. I mean, they're higher voltage and amp versions as well, which are also as good and slightly larger displays. So, uh, we like it, we like it a lot. So, uh, let me know what you think down below.